Fight City NYC. My name is Ben Chan. I'm usually here with Aris Pina to talk about boxing, but Aris's folks are in town tonight and they went to uh, the Apollo Theater to watch a show. So we'll see Aris again next week. Uh, but let's talk about the fight that's going to be on HBO this Saturday at 9 o'clock. It's HBO Championship Boxing. Aris and I will be doing the punch zone for the fight. And that card is going to start with Donito Donaire versus Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. Now, you probably, uh, if you've been watching Fight City NYC, you've heard me talk about Donito Donaire in past episodes this year already. We've talked about a potential matchup with Guillermo Rigondeaux. We haven't really said anything about this fight. We haven't said anything about Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. The reason being that people really Really don't expect Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. to do anything or to be able to defeat Nodito Donier. Now that's not to say that Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. is a bad fighter. He's actually a good fighter. He comes from a good pedigree because uh, he is the son of, uh, of a legendary uh, Puerto Rican boxer Wilfredo Vasquez. Now the, the, the problem is that Nodito Donier is just so good in a lot of people's eyes. Nodito Donier is uh, either three or four or as or that high on a lot of people's pound for pound list and so people are already thinking about what Nonito Donaire is going to do next. Now what does Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. bring to the table? Well he's a good fighter, he has decent power, he's 21-1-1, his lone loss being against Jorge Arce last year uh, and uh, it was an action fight. Vasquez definitely had his moments against Arce uh, but again Nonito Donaire is just that much better than Vasquez that people are comfortable just looking past them. I'm just hoping that there's a good fight um, so we'll see what Vasquez brings to the table. I think you're probably, you know, he's a guy who, who likes to punch and likes to move forward and Donaire usually takes advantage and knocks those kinds of guys out. Uh, so we'll see what happens. The next, the other fight on the card is uh, the middleweight champion of the world, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. versus Marco Antonio Rubio. Now the reason I say champion is because I don't think that Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. is the middleweight champion of the world. He's actually more of a belt holder. He is a belt holder. He holds the WBC belt. And for the longest time, well, actually not the longest time, since last year, uh, Jose Suleiman, who runs the WBC, has said that they will force Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. to fight the real middleweight champion of the world, Sergio Martinez. That fight hasn't been made, and it looks like the WBC, the WBC isn't going to force Chavez Jr. to fight Martinez. So the real middleweight champion in the world, the legit guy at, at middleweight, the baddest man on the planet at middleweight is Sergio Martinez. Now, let's talk about Chavez Jr. versus Marco Antonio Rubio. That looks like an interesting fight. Um, Rubio is an interesting fighter because uh, after losing to uh, Kelly Pavlik, who was then the middleweight champion in 2009, he's been on a 10 fight winning streak. Uh, his most notable victory being uh, the defeat uh, over uh, David Lemieux, who was a uh, French Canadian uh, middleweight prospect. Um, and he's a good fighter. The problem is, is that he's kind of a smallish middleweight and Julio Cesar Chavez is actually kind of a big middleweight. Uh, the last time uh, that he fought, Chavez came in on, on the unofficial scales at around 180, 185. So he's kind of a big uh, middleweight. And it's not to say that Chavez doesn't have any skill at all. I think he should be able to handle Rubio. And uh, if that isn't enough, um, they're fighting. Uh, they're fighting in Mexico, so there will be Mexican officials, and there will be a Mexican judge. Um, so uh, I don't think a lot of people are giving uh, Rubio. Um, much of a chance, um, but Rubio is a, a legit fighter and we'll see what he brings to the table. Now I'm more interested in Sergio Martinez, the real middleweight champion of the world. He actually does uh, have a, another fight coming up in March uh, on the 17th. He's actually fighting in New York. Uh, he's fighting uh, um, another middleweight named Matthew Macklin and that actually is a good fight. We'll talk about that more uh, as the fight approaches. Uh, so again, Nonito Donaire versus Wilfredo Vasquez Jr., uh, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. versus Marco Antonio Rubio. That's going to be on HBO at 9 o'clock uh, this Saturday. Now there's some more fight news that we need to talk about. Today actually, earlier today, uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. got licensed by the Nevada uh, State Athletic Commission and it was announced that he will be fighting Miguel Cotto on May 5th. Um, this is an interesting fight. I'm happy for Miguel Cotto. The last time we saw him, he was getting his revenge versus um, Antonio Margarito at Madison Square Garden in December. Um, a lot of people thought that Cotto looked good. He did look good, but I think that a product of that is also the fact that Mar uh, Antonio Margarito doesn't have a lot left in the tank. He's essentially a one-eyed fighter at this point. Um, so, 
Now Cotto moves on to fight Mayweather. I'm happy that he's going to get another big payday. I didn't want to see Miguel Cotto versus Manny Pacquiao too because I didn't feel that there was any unfinished business uh, left there. Um, and the reason why Cotto is picked uh, Mayweather instead of Pacquiao is because Mayweather is willing to fight him at the uh, junior middleweight limit of 154 pounds. So Cotto doesn't have to um, move back down to welterweight like Pacquiao would have wanted. Um, this is an interesting fight. Cotto is a guy who's got real skills. I'm not sure if he's as powerful as he was down at uh, welterweight or junior welterweight. He doesn't seem to go to the body as much as he used to. He used to be a really devastating body puncher. Um, and of course you have Mayweather. We all know what he brings to the table. We all know uh, that he's probably the, the smartest ring tactician there is right now in all of boxing. And the question with Mayweather is uh, when is age going to catch up, if ever age is going to catch up. Usually with guys with the skill set of Mayweather, um, it takes some time and the, he, he does his, his, his style doesn't rely so much on strength, uh, on speed I mean. So we'll, we'll talk more about the fight, we'll make some predictions as the fight approaches, but right now my gut tells me that Miguel Cotto is going to come out, he's going to do his best like he always does, he's going to give an honest effort, but Mayweather is just too talented for Cotto. That's what my gut says right now. Um, now, because the, uh, the Mayweather Cotto fight has been made, it looks like Pacquiao will probably be uh, end up fighting Tim Bradley on June 9th or sometime later in June, if not June 9th. Uh, uh, they're going to make this fight uh, because Tim Bradley is a top ranked fighter and so is Manny Pacquiao. So it's going to be an in-house fight. Uh, Tim Bradley, he's, he's uh, a young fighter. Um, he's fought at well to weight before 147 pounds which is probably what this fight is going to be made at uh, versus Pacquiao uh, Bradley was the man at junior welterweight at 140 and he has fought at junior at, at welterweight before uh, you know we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that fight as it approaches um, now one other piece of uh, fight news that I have to talk about uh, the Andre Berto Victor Ortiz rematch that was supposed to happen later in February that is off for now because Andre Berto uh, unfortunately suffered a torn bicep in training. He needed emergency surgery to repair it and he's not going to be ready uh, by the middle of February. So that is disappointing because their first fight last year was a fight of the year candidate. Um, so hopefully he heals and, they, and uh, Ortiz uh, sticks around and they make that fight. Otherwise, uh, maybe Ortiz goes and guns and guns for the uh, Mayweather rematch though. I don't think that there's any unfinished business between Ortiz and Mayweather. And before I sign off, there's one more thing that I want to uh, bring up, um, and that is um, the passing of Goody Petronelli. He was uh, most famous uh, for working the um, legendary midway, marvelous Marvin Hagler's corner for a number of years. Uh, Petronelli was a boxer himself, and when he left boxing, he ended up running a uh, gym in Brockton, Massachusetts, and he was most famous for working uh, Hagler's Corner. Um, he is one of those guys, it's an old school trainer, um, and he will be missed. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Goody Petronelli. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on Fight City NYC.